Well, if this just ain't the biggest heaping piece of junk I ever seen in my life. God, I don't know if this is going to be even worth it. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? We're back to your regularly scheduled content of junky Fords. This is going to be the engine we're going to refresh for Appaloosa. Race season's coming up and I've got to get this thing running again. So we're going to take this thing down to the bare block, clean it, new bearings, new rings, cam, take the heads off the other motor and we're going to get this thing running again. And we're going to do it without taking it to a machine shop. You guys can do this in your garage like me or even under a canopy, under your shade tree, wherever you can do it. You just do it. Just do it, okay? That's all you gotta do. Just do it! We're gonna get our little Harbor Freight home, delays the cylinders, show you how to replace these bearings. Let's just, let's give you a little overview of it right now. So here we can check out. All these are good. No rods and knocking. So. Yeah, this would be a good, a good rebuilder. Everything looks to be in decent shape. Um, pistons are okay. You know what? I'm not going to get all, I'm not going to flip it all around and everything. I'll just show you when we take the pistons out. So first thing you're going to see me do is we're going to take off this oil pump and start knocking pistons out this thing. It's going to be a lot of fun. I need some damn gloves. This is about to get messy. Well, I might be out of luck on that one. I got all the junk in the world you can think of, except a pair of gloves. If you guys saw my big block build, you'll know I'm pretty excited to be able to have an engine that I can rotate, not have to be on my back for. Definitely some carbon buildup, but I mean, really, these things don't look that bad. No scarring. Piston skirts look good. Rod looks good. So far, nothing to worry about. Damn! <laughs> Wouldn't be a proper Vasily video if I didn't drop something. Pop this piston out of the hole. Luckily, looks fine. Thank goodness. That's that American iron right there. You can't break these things. Well, you can, but you know. Can you guys believe this is my first time doing something like this? I have never taken an engine down to the bare block. I have always just slapped on a top end on a decent short block. So this is all new to me. Not like you couldn't tell. Got all the rods and pistons out. Looks like we gotta take this camshaft off. Put this chain and gear in the storage pan. Out pops the camshaft. 
and you want to make sure it hits every cam bearing on the way out. This thing is gunked up. Look at that. That's for that extra lift, you know? It's got the little granules on there to make the cam go whoop, 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 and make the valves go whoop, whoop, whoop. And you know, you go faster. You know, I'm guessing since you, I don't know, do you tighten it from the center out like everything else? If so, then we want to take the outsides off first. We're just going to do that. Yeah, I should have seen that one coming. Looking real good over here. I'll, uh... Ooh, we got sludge, but... Who doesn't have a little sludge? I'll go ahead and give you guys a rundown of what we're looking at. You guys and Maddie will be very proud of me. Check this out. I got a little dripper pan. So we don't have another fiasco like, uh, you remember that stain and that, hey, eh, we don't have to talk about it right now. So this is an engine. You can tell it's an engine because of the way it is. It's got cylinders, it's got bores, it's got bolts. I mean, come on. The cylinders are pretty good. Um, nothing that I don't think we can hone out. Like, there's a little bit of rust up here. Yeah, this stuff will all, this stuff will all come out with a good hone, I believe. Nothing too bad. That's probably our worst spot back here. Or actually, this might be the worst. Ah, oh, they're about the same. They feel about the same. No big deal. This has less ridge at the top of the cylinder than the 460 did. So, that's a plus. So far with my calibrated eyeballs, crank looks pretty good. There's no big gashes or gouges or scratches. So, we should be pretty good with that. I'll take a quick polish. Got our caps of the main. Here's a main bearing. It looks pretty good. No signs of abnormal wear. There's a rod bearing, and it looks good too. And there are the power pistons. So like I said, carbon buildup. Use a good cleanup, new rings. Should be good to go. And check out that work setup we got going on. This is real. It's getting a little late tonight, so I just wanted to tear it down Finally get the ball rolling on this thing. Tomorrow we'll try and hone the cylinders out and give it a good old pressure washing. And we'll come up with a concoction to really clean those pistons. And maybe I should probably go ahead and get the rings off of those too. So we'll catch you in the morning. It is a beautiful sunshiny day today. And we're about to get started on honing these cylinders. You can see, you know, there's some rust over here, blah, blah, blah. But we're, we're gonna get that all done. I pre-wet the driveway with water so that the oil doesn't stick so much there, but you know, it'll disperse and go this way and then it'll make a stain over here. But that's okay, that's fine. So let's get this done. I've got a stone hone from Harbor Freight and we're just gonna get to it. Oil and water don't mix. So, if I take this hose and spray, where the oil goes, you have to back up. Oh. Spray where the oil goes, the oil will get displaced.
Well, guys, here's where we're at so far. This one cleaned up a lot. You remember there was a lot of rust right here. Cleaned up real good. Still got some stuff to go through right there. A little bit of stuff down there. They're looking good though. I'm learning as I'm going along the way. These I didn't do too good of a job on. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna rehome these. And um, yeah, let's get to it. Check out the final product right here. You got a good looking cross hatch. You know, maybe it's crossing and hatching. Got a little bit right there where the ring comes up to the top, right on the ridge. I mean, most of these cleaned up okay. There, there are little things here and there that I'm not gonna get out with a hone, but it'll be good enough for who it's for, and that's me. You guys have seen the stuff that I work on. Got the piston soaking in some p -p 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 purple, purple, purple power. Make sure you don't soak the wrist pins in it because things and things and stuff, you know, you just, that's what they say on the internet. Cleaned up our crankshaft a little bit. Still gotta polish it. So next thing we gotta do is clean up those pistons right over there, all 89, I mean 70, I mean eight of them. And then, Block's good, cleaned it out, flushed out all the water passages. Basically it was only rust in there, but hey, I mean, that that can't cause any problems later. It, no way. And then we've got the uh, cranking shaft, you know, over here or somewhere. Look, hey, there, 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 there it is. Right there. We got the cranking shaft, we're gonna polish that. Walmart didn't have the stuff I needed. I'm gonna use some Brasso to polish it up. So uh, tomorrow I'm gonna get some sandpaper, Brasso, a little, maybe I need to get a toothbrush to clean up them pistons a little bit. I've got a big bristle brush, but all right, on to the next one. All right, we're gonna work on cleaning up the crankshaft so we can put it back in, check our bearing clearances, all the good stuff. What you're gonna need to do this at home, 400 grit wet sandpaper, you see, wet, dry. Some sort of lubricant. I just have WD-40 laying around. Then metal polish. I use this because it's cheap. Last thing you're gonna need is a shoelace. So I'm gonna take it off one of these shoes. These were running shoes, but you know, I don't really run, so we don't need them on here anymore. You're gonna take your sandpaper and cut it to the size of your crank journal. Spray it off with your parts cleaner. I had already wiped it off, but you know, you want to wipe it off with a shop towel or something like that. You're going to need to glove up, or at least I'm going to. Get your sandpaper nice and wet with your lube. And then we're going to wrap it around. Then you can take your shoelace.
We don't have really any big scratches to get out, so I'm just doing a light, really light job with this sandpaper. We can polish out all the little pieces out. Oh, and by the way, I gave up on the shoestring. Turns out you want the flat shoestring. A round one just ain't gonna do, and I don't have any flat shoes around here. All right, we've got the sanding part done. It all feels really good. So now you're gonna get a micro fibre. You're gonna cut it maybe half an inch, half an inch thick, get a half inch thick strip. You're gonna get your metal polish. Just put it on. Get it all nice and all over the place. Take your microfiber. And just seesaw it back and forth. Okay, so now we gotta check all these bearing clearances. So, gonna get our plastic gauge, cut a little piece for each of our mains. Basically, what you do, get your little piece of plastic gauge, set it on the bearing. Doesn't need to be that big. And then you tighten down your main caps on it. And that's it. We'll look at this little chart to give you on the packaging and see what our clearances are. Torque spec on these mains is 60 to 70 foot pounds. So we're going to start at 30. All right, so there's our plastic gauge on the bearing. And then you line it up with whatever looks good on here, you know? So that looks like right about, oh, well that's in, that's the commie units. I don't know how to read them. Let me unfold this thing. Looks like we're almost dead on the 2000s mark. I would say that's good. You're gonna want, what, I think a thou per journal diameter. So I think these are two inch journals. Factory spec is like thou and a half or 16 tenths, something like that. So I'm happy with these. I think we're gonna call them good. And we'll just finish tightening them up. Well, you can't forget your sticky sauce that you put on there. We've got our cranking shaft out of here. Now we're gonna really stick up these bearings. So we've got our 
engine assembly lube. Get it a real good on there. It is not possible to use too much of this stuff. This is good stuff. And uh, I would definitely recommend um, using gloves, but I don't have any. So we're not using gloves, but you should, you should. Cause this stuff, look, I mean, look at the stick on that. That is some sticky stuff. Now we can lay this crankshaft back in. Now one good thing to know about the plastic gauge is it is oil soluble. So you can take you a rag with WD-40 or oil, get an oily rag. You can wipe it off or use any sort of degreaser too. But that's just to let you know that if you don't get it all off, you don't have to worry about it because the oil will dissolve it once you start up the engine. Now don't you guys yell at me. I'm going to very gently run this down with my little impact. Just barely. I'm gonna torque these down to 70 foot pounds. But we're gonna start at 35. There you go. Spins nice and easy. Now that right there, that's easier than your Uncle Steve's mama, I tell you what. <laughs> Woo, my bad, supposed to be family friendly. All right, next thing we gotta do, clean up these old compression creators. They've been soaking in degreaser for, I don't know, days, three days. If you're watching this, it's all in one video. So to you guys, it's gonna be a couple minutes. That's movie magic right there. Doesn't get better than that. Soaking in purple power. And then I just sprayed a couple minutes ago some oven cleaner on the parts that aren't submerged. So we're going to scrub those with our brush and for the rods and in the piston rings, my toothbrush. Cause I don't brush my teeth anyway. I don't need to. It's all natural. My ancestors didn't brush their teeth. Why do I gotta brush my teeth? We've also broken one of the old rings so I can really get in the groove. You know, get in the groove. That's what we do. And yeah, get that carbon out of there. So, unfortunately, I don't have a parts washer. I don't have that good of a setup. And it's dark outside because the only time I have time to do stuff like this is at night. And I work during the day. And I take care of the baby and the dog when I get home. So we're just going to do it right here in the driveway. All nice and dirty with a hose because it's too late to start the pressure washer. All right, here's how we're gonna check our ring end gap. You put the ring in, then you take your old compression creator, push it down in there to make sure that ring is square. Then you're gonna to wanna to grab your feeler gauge, as these things, you know, so you can feel. And we're gonna check. We'll start with 16, because I think that's factory spec. You see there's that gap down there. Yep, you see it. Put our gauge in. A little resistance, so. It's probably pretty good. Definitely not too tight. Let me just 
I'm gonna go up a size and see how that feels. Try 18. Eighteen definitely has more resistance, so we're probably good on the top ring right there. Um, check the rest of them, or maybe not. That one's good. More than like, I might check one more on the other side, but if that one's good, we're probably good for the rest. But I will check the second rings to see if those are good, because the second ring you want a little bit bigger of a gap, so. Let's get this thing going. And you know what? If the rings were too big, I couldn't do anything about it anyway. So, might as well just send it. You guys, you don't really, you don't need to see me do all of them, do you? Because this is really boring without music playing and uh, I need my phone to do that, so. But what, I'll be back, don't you worry. We'll be right back. All right, I wanted to try it myself before I did it on camera. I've got these two rods and pistons in. Turns nice and smooth. So now we're gonna do the next two and I'll show you guys how to do it. As you can tell from my editing room lighting, I forgot something in the video. Turns out, I did not hit record when I was putting the pistons in. So you missed all of that fun. Um, maybe an idea, go watch another video and see how they do it. So I'll give you a second. Okay, you're probably back by now, so let's just let's just keep you on. You know, I was gonna work on getting all the parts I need off of the other engine, but as soon as I got my electronic carburetor off and my distributator, um, started raining, so had to stop that. We're gonna come back inside, and I got something I can put on. I got a oil pump that for you know to pump the oil, you know. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now you guys better watch closely. You know, this is, this part's hard. I wouldn't be surprised if you had to rewind. Um, I would bookmark this part right here because you, you will be revisiting it. It's very tedious process. Put our gasket down. Actually, you know what? We're gonna put it up here. Get our bolts. Flip it over. Oh, <laughs> almost forgot a very important part. Now, there's no use in having an oil pump if you don't have anything to drive the oil pump. So there's your oil pump turning shaft right there. I got an ARP, an ARP brand, because, you know, why not? I can. You don't need to do this, but I'm put some of our Red stick right on the tip. Just because, you know, the pump and your uh, drive shaft get pretty friendly. They get to know each other pretty well. 
and uh, they'll be hanging out for a while. It's nice I'm not putting this one in upside down like I was on the big block, so I can actually see that it's in the right place. Let me get my portable sun real quick just to make sure. Yeah, we're good. Now you don't have to put in an oil pump. Um, you can do an oil pump delete. And with an oil pump delete, you're gonna save weight off the front end of the car because you're not gonna have this big cast iron oil pump there. Here's our brand new oil sucker. So you see the engine's got a stud right here. That's where your tab is gonna go. Mount it up like that. And actually, it looks like for this Champs oil pan pickup, they moved the mounting tab down there. So, guess I'm going to loosen these two main caps and move this stud over. Now for your setup, you don't have to go with this fancy pickup and pan. You can just use your stock one. But I'm gonna be going around corners kind of fast. Not super fast, because you know, I mean, I'm not that good, but enough to where the oil might kind of run away from the pickup. And uh, then Uncle Rodney comes knocking and not a huge fan of him. We finally got our thunder stick in the mail. This is a Comp Cams XC274 HR7685 double dash three quarter race cam. And um, yeah, this is what you put in a 5.0. Good roller camshaft. Richard Holdner says they're good, so I trust what he says. You don't have to worry as much about, you know, getting it lube real good with that red and sticky ultra slick. You can just use motor oil or something like that because it's a roller cam. But we're going to use our handy dandy red super slick duper 5000 anyway. I guess I just gotta send her home. You guys at home, don't do that. The old engine had this sweet timing gear drive set. I mean, it's noisy. I, I don't see a real big need to use a gear set if you have a chain. Yeah, I don't know, some people like the noise, but I'm not a huge fan. You can, you can get more accurate timing with a gear drive set in really tight tolerance applications or like racing applications. A gear drive will help, but for us normal guys, really doesn't matter. We're just reusing it because we had it already. So same thing with a regular timing set, you want to line up the marks. I've got zero down there on the bottom. I'm gonna move this keyway up. That should be pretty close. Put our crank sprocket on. You have the gears. I don't know if it matters, but I think the big one goes on the left. There you go. Now we're timed. And your timing cover will press up against that and you'll be good. Got our nice fancy blue Felpro gasket here. Just gonna go ahead and put them up there. There's our timing cover. You can see it's got this part machined down perfectly so that we can use this gear set. We're using the one off of the old motor. Got all my timing cover bolts started. I got this thread sealant because I can't remember if these down here go into a water jacket. So, just to be on the safe side, 
Put a little bit on there. And same with this one. Get our torque wrench out. Goes to 20 something foot pounds. Boom. Click. Next up, we've got our. Oh shit! That always happens to me. Next up, we've got our water pump, and I'm gonna put these bolts where they go in the timing cover. Well, I cleaned up the water pump and the backing plate, and it turns out that all the gaskets that I got are wrong. We're just gonna have to. Bolt it on like this. Shit. I mean, darn. Damn it. I mean, uh, what's the point? That'll be good until we can get a uh, proper water pump gasket set up. Now here's something I'm really excited for about this build and I've had it forever. Boom. A Champ Pans Road Race Oil Pan. It's got a windage tray, baffles. Well, you probably heard all that on the mic. It's got trap doors in the bottom. It's a crank scraper. This is going to be really good. Really excited about it. So uh, let's get our one piece oil pan gasket on and Slam this pan on. Get your silicone in the corners. There, there. Get you some right there where the timing cover meets the block. And get some in the corners back here. All right guys, today's the day. Got our head gaskets. There's a side that says front. So you put that to the front because that's the way it is. Then you're gonna take your cylinder head and you're gonna you know, put it on there. Nice and easy like. Whew. That's it. Guess we're doing this the old fashioned way. Microphone just died, so we're just gonna, you know, do it like how our forefathers used to do. All right, all your short bolts go on the bottom. And on your bottom bolts, they go into a water jacket. So you put some thread sealer. You should be good to go. Now, I probably should have cleaned up these bolts and the bolt holes, but I didn't. So, we're just making do. Just gonna hand tighten these babies first. So these head bolts I have are ARP. Final torque on these is like 70 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go 
There you go, 70 foot pounds. Ready to blow the head gasket out. All right, guys. Cylinder heads are on. Got your rocking arms. I already put those on. These are positive stop rocker arms. They're rollers, but they're not your adjustable ones where you can you know, adjust them and things like that. So to tighten those, all you do is tighten them to like 18 to 20 foot pounds. Get your nice beam style wrench that I keep telling you guys about. And uh, yeah, doesn't matter where it's at on the cam, doesn't matter where the lifters are, the valves open, closed, whatever. You just do it. And I know you like to do that. And turns over nice and free. Next up, or I guess really the last thing is we're going to put our intake on. You know, we got our intake right there. We've already cleaned it up on the underneath. Got our nice fancy fellow pro gasket. Turns out it's not that fancy. You got this part right here that's blocking a water passage. And that side. Also, apparently my kit did not come with the um, steel core gasket. Which, you know, you really do want the steel core. But, this what came with the kit, so I'm going to use it. As you can see, now there's no obstruction in the water passages. Next is our little silicone. So I'm gonna go ahead and just that over real quick. Oh. While we're at it, might as well put the finishing touch on. Boom. There it is. There's our budget, no machine work, didn't touch a shop. Well, you know, except that head had the bolt broken off in it, but that was 30 bucks. That's nothing. Can't wait to throw this thing back in Appaloosa and be back running the track. Oh, by the way, I did get a water pump backing plate gasket and a water pump gasket. Well, guys, that's it. That is our 302. No machine work done. At home. Take it apart. Hone it out. Put it back together. New bearings, new rings, all that stuff. This is the first time that I've taken it down to a bare block and put bearings and rings in the motor and... I'd do it again. It was a lot of work, but I think I'd do it again. Got the complete short block for 150 bucks. Then most of the stuff we're reusing, actually, you know, all the stuff we're reusing from the other engine. I think I have about 
100 bucks in bearings. Ring set was like 50 or $60. And I, I used good bearings. I used King, XP, HP, whatever P bearings. Not the silicone ones, but the tri-metal. Because, you know, three is better than four, two, one. You know, they're just better. And then I got Molly rings, which we'll see how those Molly rings seal to our homemade cross hatching that we have done. I bought the oil pan because I wanted something that we wouldn't lose oil pressure, high G forces in the turns. That was like, I mean, this is a $300 oil pan or $400. I think it's $300 oil pan. Camshaft is that fancy comp cam, which is like, $400, I got it for $325, $350. So, you can definitely do it cheaper than I did. If you're just rebuilding it, you just need a, you spun a bearing or maybe not spun a bearing because you're gonna have to do crank work. You know, if you're, if you're putting new bearings and rings in your engine, you could do it for under, three, four hundred dollars because the gasket set that I got was a hundred dollars because it was the high performance one. That didn't even include the nice steel core intake gaskets. So don't waste your money and buy the high performance gasket set. And it didn't even come with a one piece oil pan gasket. I had to buy that. But yeah, for me, you know, I've got, I've got a G sitting in camshaft and oil pan. We're gonna leave this engine how it is we're gonna call it done for now i'll put the excess like you know when we drop it in the car that'll be when i put the distributor and all the other stuff in we got our fi tech i think that's really it is you know the only thing that you're not seeing here is the distributor and the harmonic balancer which i'm going to reuse the old harmonic balancer too don't be intimidated trying to fix your hot rod put a little work into it do it yourself They'll come out good. Let's make sure to not keep those projects sitting neglected. And remember, go get them revs.